Uh, good afternoon. My name is Kotaro Tanahashi from uh, Recruit Communications. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today to share with you my work on quantum needing for feature selection. And I'd be very happy to take any questions you might have at the end of my short presentations. And this research is a joint work with Shu Tanaka from Waseda University. And we've been working on applications of quantum needing and and we also have developed some uh, tools to facilitate the development of systems for quantum annealing. And before going into the details, uh, let me quickly introduce an overview of our research. And feature selection is an essential problem in machine learning. And mutual information-based feature selection, or MIFS for short, is one of the feature selection methods, which is NP help problem. And since the original formulation of MIFS is interactable, we reformulate it in Cuba formulation. And we also confirm the optimization by D-Wave performs very well in MIFS. So uh, what is feature selection? Feature selection is to identify the only relevant features in predictive analysis. If we narrow down the features too much, we could eliminate the relevant features at the same time. This is called a uh, bias effect. But uh, if we select too many features, the model is likely to be sensitive to the uh, fluctuation of the training model. This is called variance effect. And in predictive analysis, uh, balancing this uh, bias variance trade-off is crucial. And feature selection is to select the minimum subset of features with maximum information. In other words, it helps us to balance this bias variance trade-off. So in this way, uh, feature selection uh, improves the prediction uh, ability. And finally, uh, feature selection is NP hard problem, which has two to the n combinations. And there are three types of feature selection. Wrapper methods, embedded methods, and filter methods. And wrapper methods uh, iteratively uh, evaluate a feature subset by black box learning algorithm. And embedded methods train the model and select the features at the same time. And fi filter methods, uh, features are selected by some criteria, such as uh, feature, uh, mutual information. And also, there, uh, there are some researches on feature selection by quantum needing. And, and last year, I, I, presented the, uh, ex I presented the extension of the Q-boost algorithm. And I added the uh, feature term to the original formulation of the Q-boost, which induces the sparse feature uh, subset. And this is uh, one of the embedded methods. But this time, uh, I'm going to focus on the filter methods because uh, this is independent on the running algorithm, uh, which means uh, I can use this algorithm as a general uh, pre-processing in the data pipeline. So uh, what is mutual information? Uh, mutual information uh, between x and y is a measure of the mutual independence between two random variables, x and y. So if I dis uh, describe it more intuitively, uh, if the value of the mutual information is high, uh, we are able to predict y given x. But the, when the value is low, it's hard to predict y given x. So as shown in the uh, uh, image below, uh, mutual information can capture nonlinear relationships unlike Pearson's correlation coefficient. So uh, just a mutual information uh, can, capture, uh, can capture the nonlinear relationships between variables. And if we use the mutual information as a criteria in filter methods, this, uh, this feature selection method is called mutual information-based feature selection, or MIFS for short. MIFS is uh, one of the uh, uh, popular filter methods. And general formulation of MIFS is defined by this uh, equation. 
uh, basically, MIFS selects a feature subset S uh, with the size of K, and which maximizes the mutual information between uh, X, S, and Y. And Y is the target variable we want to predict. And X, S is the uh, selected feature subset. But unfortunately, the exact calculation of uh, this inf uh, mutual information is intractable. So uh, because exact calculation of the mutual information is uh, intractable, some heuristic algorithms have been developed. And max relevance methods uh, select the most uh, relevant features iteratively. And MRMR method uh, select the uh, most relevant and least redundant features iteratively. But these methods are just uh, uh, greedy approximations. So uh, there are two contributions in this research. First, we reformulate MIFS uh, by Cubo so that the Ising uh, annealing machine can solve the problem. And second, uh, we confirm the optimizations by D-Wave performs well in this problem. And now I'd like to focus on the formulation of the uh, MIFS in Cubo. So mutual information between X and Y can be expanded by using the chain theorem. And the proof is not so complicated as shown in the below. Now we have uh, formulations, uh, the equations above. But the second term contains the indices S except I, which is intractable. So we approximate this term under the assumption of conditional independence. And the equation above is a derived formulation of MIFS. Now I'd like to reformulate this equation by Cubo. First, uh, we introduce the binary variable x. And if xi is equal to 1, we select i's feature. And Cubo of MIFS is composed of two terms. And the first term is a mutual information term. And the second term is a penalty term to select only K features. And in this way, we obtain the cube formulation of uh, MIFS. And this can be optimized by Ising uh, annealing machines. And so now, uh, let us look at the interpretation of the derived formulation. When we expand the second term of the derived formulation, we can see the three terms. The first term represents the relevancy of the feature xi to the target variable y. And the second term represents the redundancy of the feature, uh, between uh, feature xi and the feature xj. So uh, in this optimization, relevancy is increased while redundancy is decreased. So you might notice that heuristic methods such as uh, max relevance or MRMR are included in the derived formulation. So for MIFS, F MIFS we compared several optimization methods for two types of formulations, uh, Cubo and BQP. For Cubo formulation, we compared uh, D-Wave 2000Q and uh, TubSearch, uh, the implementation of QBSolve. And for uh, binary quadratic problem, or BQP, we use linear relaxation, or uh, linear, or truncate power method, uh, T power here. The only difference between BQP and Cubo is whether it's constrained or unconstrained. So in the next few slides, I will explain the linear and the t-power methods. Uh, the linear relaxation is a very common technique in optimization. And uh, here we introduce binary variable wij for representing xixj to linearize the quadratic objective function. And since one of the uh, optimal uh, condition is 2 wij is equal to xi plus xj. Uh, we have the objective function uh, L1 norm of uh, qx. Because qij is non-negative, the solution of this problem is given by k largest column sum of q. 
So this solution is uh, tightly bounded, and time complexity is just uh, O of n k. So uh, here I'd like to uh, stress that the linear method is quite fast, and the solution is tightly bounded. And uh, in this slide, I'd like to introduce truncated power method, or T power. We solved the MIFS optimization problem by finding the largest k sparse eigenvector of Q, which is defined by the uh, equations here. And we select i's feature if xi is uh, positive. So basically, uh, in t power method, we multiply uh, q by vector xt and truncate xt repeatedly until the vector x converges. And this algorithm needs uh, initial, uh, initial value, so we use the solution of the linear as the initial value of uh, t power method. And also, uh, t power is known to be the state of the art method for BQP problem in machine learning community. So let's move on to the D wave machine. We use the D wave 2000 Q with the following settings. We use um, 64 Q uh, bit fully connected embedding. And an alien time is, is uh, 20 microseconds. And during one optimization, we uh, performed 100, 100 uh, annealing repetitions. So first, we confirm the optimization method with randomly generated data. Feature size of the data is just 64, which is equal to the number of free connected qubits available on the D-Way machine. And y-axis axis represents an average mutual information increase with regard to the linear method. And we confirm uh, and uh, x-axis represents the number of features. So from this graph, we confirm that D-Wave uh, obtained the best MI scores, and especially the feature size is small. But Typically, uh, the dimension size of the data is larger than the hardware size, which is uh, now uh, 64. In this case, we use a linear uh, method to narrow down the features uh, to the hardware size as a pre-processing. Pre -processing. And this type of pre-processing is common in optimization. And we expect this pre-processing is effective because linear has a uh, tight lower bound. So now we compare the optimization method with random data, and the feature size is larger than the hardware size, now uh, 128. And even though the dimension size is larger than hardware size, the D-Wave with linear pre-processing shows better results. And we here we experimentally confirm the pre-processing uh, by linear method is effective. And the result of top search and T power is comparable. However, the ab average uh, run time of top search is six, uh, 14 seconds, which is about 500 times slower than T power method. And the annealing time of D-Wave is about 10 times faster than uh, T power method. So uh, how does MIFS perform on real world, uh, real, on real world problem? So in this graph, we compared uh, mutual information scores of each optimization methods for different number of features with the public data set. And again, we confirmed that D-Wave obtained the best MI scores among other methods. And now I'd like to evaluate the quality of the selected feature subset. After we select a K feature uh, subset, uh, we calculated the classification accuracy with this feature subset by random forest classifiers. And the classification accuracy is calculated by one minus uh, error rate on test data. So in this chart, we can see a comparison of four different methods, 
and the x-axis represents a uh, number of features, and the y-axis uh, represents uh, uh, accuracy, uh, with uh, higher being better. Again, we confirm that D-Wave is better than other methods, especially when the feature size is small. So in conclusion, uh, we derive the Cuba formulation of MIFS so that the program can be embedded in uh, Ising mach annealing machine. And also, uh, we confirm the preprocessing by linear is effective for a larger problem. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. So, any question? I have a question regarding uh, precision problems of your problem. So, you have a hard constraint with the parameter alpha. Mm -hmm. The how do you deal with the uh, with decision of uh, what alpha to choose and how does this ah, spoil okay. potentially the problem? Okay. Um, so for uh, cube formulation, we have uh, parameter alpha. So we increase the uh, alpha uh, from the initial value. And uh, if the alpha is small, uh, the constraint uh, is not satisfied. So uh, until the, uh, the condition is satisfied, I increase the alpha uh, just by step by step. Yeah. And, uh, and what is the typical value of alpha that you see, and how does it scale with the uh, system size? Yeah, uh, alpha actually depends on the size of the feature subset. And the features, uh, so features, uh, the size of the feature subset k here, when the k is uh, larger, and we have to uh, choose a larger alpha. And especially, and uh, also I'd like to mention that the the tendency of alpha is different uh, between D-Wave and top size, actually, yeah. Question? Thanks, Thanks Tanahashi san uh, You showed uh, um, uh, a final result within a data set, but what was the form of the data set? Was it uh, images or business data? What was the data uh, type? Actually, this is a, uh, okay, a data set. Okay, data set is just a binary, uh, the f features are just a binary variable because uh, we have to calculate the mutual information in, a, in advance. And if the features is continuous variable, uh, it's hard to calculate the mutual information. And actually, there's a technique to calculate the mutual information for continuous variable. But th in this case, uh, for just for simplicity, we use uh, uh, this, this binary uh, uh, features. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.